Hello all you YouTube tipsters. I know I'm one of them. I love giving them and I love getting them. There's nothing like uh, saving money and being self-sufficient at the same time. Aren't those cottonwoods pretty here in early November? I did a video um, a while back on how to get free firewood. Well, I thought I'd do sort of a kind of a follow-up here and here's some timbers that I got from a local brush pile where the city slash county has a spot where you can take your uh, trees that you cut up and limbs and whatnot. And they let them sit there for a while and they'll eventually burn them but uh, I go down there and check every once in a while to see what people have left and I came across just this fantastic stash of timbers which I intend to uh, build a sawmill for. Well, one of the little, you know, one man uh, home sawmill type deals. Uh, I think they call them Alaska sawmills. Anyway, what, what I came up with was this fantastic beautiful white pine here. These are white pine and the ones there on the bottom are yellow pine and you can see the the difference and they're gonna make some fantastic lumber and there is a couple things I wanted to relate on the subject of stuff like this if you do get get uh, timbers like this and I'll take you out there and show you where I got them and tell you what's on my mind okay most places have something just like this it is a community brush pile that people can bring their lawn clippings and their tree trimmings and they're cut down a tree to make uh, space for remodeling or whatever it's overgrown they can bring it here for free and what that does that creates a fantastic opportunity for people like us because I've gotten some beautiful beautiful hardwood and softwood uh, that being like uh, juniper and um, <clears throat> uh, cedar and you can tell in this mixture here there's some pretty good size timbers most of it's small stuff brush and whatnot but there are there it can be some very good uh, usable wood for not only firewood but for lumber as well I could the, the the stumps that I got were cut into about five foot long, six foot long, and I could use it for firewood. It make great firewood, but I think it will make beautiful lumber. So that's what I'm going to use it for. But I want to show you something here that everyone would be very well advised to remember. And let me get around here. Right here are some really nice old big cottonwood uh, timbers the whole tree uh, sometimes the state will you know push one over making way for a wider road or whatever so we're gonna look in here and I really hope there's not a badger in here or a skunk because uh, badgers have a real nasty disposition and they got the hardware to back it up so what I wanted to show you if you're going to do this sort of recycling Okay, let me get around here. All right, right there you can see where this tree long, long ago grew up around some cable. And I don't know if that was an old electric line or what. Uh, it looks like it may have been uh, the, the uh, tether for a power line or something from long ago. And... Oh, let me get a little bit closer here so I can point these things out. Okay, you can see that there was actually a pipe that this tree grew up around. And this cable here, I do know that this it looks like a cross arm from a uh, power line or a um, power pole at one time. So it's probably, if I had to guess, it was probably this tree was probably out at a ranch or a farm somewhere close to a house and they uh, use that for support now here's the thing 
if you if you're sawing through one of these trees and you don't know that this is there and a lot of times they can grow up around and completely disappear and your saw blade your chainsaw blade hits that you're going to experience what's known as kickback and that is not only deadly but it is lightning fast um, what that is is the tra that, that when that blade stops it is the instantaneous transfer of the energy in that that, that motor was outputting and it transfers it in the reverse direction so if you're cutting through what's going to happen is in, in the blink of an eye that blade is going to come straight back as a matter of fact you can see what looks like a ground cable or something right there sticking up now that's happened to me once and I was fortunate enough that I was sawing in a horizontal plane and I had sawn into a chain link fence that a tree grew up around now the thing was was I knew it was there so I was aware and I was taking extra precautions and I wasn't in the line of flight of that blade thank God because that can cause some horrific and deadly injuries. Now, um, this being cottonwood, I have been told that it really doesn't make very good lumber. I'll have to try that myself and determine it in my own, but that's what I've heard. I've heard it warps pretty bad. But still, if you're making uh, a shed or something, um, this would be hard to pass up. You see, thank goodness that that's visible. But a tree can grow up around and completely enclose that, and you wouldn't have a clue until your saw blade hit that. As a matter of fact, that is why a standard safety PPE, personal protective equipment for lumberjacks, if you notice, are Kevlar bulletproof leggings. And if you look at how the, the hard hats, the gloves, all of that, you can see that uh, they're dressed for that possibility. So if you're going to do this on your own, and uh, the thing about my, well, the, the, the uh, timbers that I got were, uh, turn it around here. The good thing about that was I knew exactly where those trees came from. And they came from a yard that didn't have a fence or power line anywhere close by throughout the entire life of that, uh, of, of that tree. So when they were cut down, they, so they were selling the house and I think they were just kind of doing a little bit of landscaping. And um, so I, I was fortunate enough to know exactly where they came from and I feel it's good clean lumber. So. Uh, make sure you try to make yourself aware of these things and uh, there's it's great to save money and to um, you know be self-sufficient at the same time but you also want to be uh, safe of course I can't help but share this uh, this beauty I'm proud of the scenic beauty of where I live um, look at these fall colors just beautiful. Let me go back around. Now this is in uh, a creek. I'm not going to say where. People around here are entitled to the privacy. And uh, some beautiful uh, scenic stuff. I'll get back around and show you. By the way, I don't like uh, mixing content on my videos, but this is a, a time that I'm going to do that. Um, what they do is they take these piles and they get them to their huge and they'll leave, leave them for a couple of years and then burn them. So what you have is a lot of uh, charcoal in, in these places. I mean, this is, this right here is the stuff that while I was down here looking for timbers to use to recycle, I'd be gathering up this uh, charcoal to use in my blacksmithing forge. I mean, this is, this is great stuff. This would be great stuff to use in a forge. It's totally free. 
which by the way make sure you have uh, the authorization to come to these places some sometimes they don't like it so make sure there's tons of uh, tons of charcoal here from from these burns and uh, this would go great in the forge if you don't live where there's uh, coal or it's too expensive for you and there's some more this stuff would just be great the big one this right here oh, that's just perfect because when they burn it they let it smolder for a month or more stinking up the place around here but uh, that makes it where there's a lot of charcoal available those cap rocks are really pretty in the fall nice calm day today and I don't mind saying I don't like it screwed up with wind turbines that's a whole nother video